The week 11 test in uh, Barcelona was uh, frankly a bit of a shock. Uh, we, uh, as the timesheets rolled through day by day, the realisation uh, uh, came upon us that we were almost certainly the slowest car out there. So having got over the shock, uh, which took a day or two, uh, it was literally all hands to the pump. What can we do to uh, at least come to Australia uh, with some sense of uh, pride preserved. Uh, we, you know, the great name of McLaren had to be upheld. Uh, coming last wasn't an option. Uh, there was a big, big mountain to climb. You, uh, you eat an elephant in small chunks, <laughs> so uh, we still wanted to eat as much of the elephant as we could. So actually we, we got into a mode of monitoring every 24 hours what we were gonna do, what we'd learnt, uh, and so what we should do next. Um, and actu actually, we, we put a huge amount of performance onto the car just for the very next week. Uh, we realised uh, very early on that, that the, the problem was uh, principally aerodynamic uh, and that we were just missing downforce. Well, um, as we went off to Australia and then a quick series of races, we were, we were trying to constantly put uh, the pieces that we could manage in a short time onto the car uh, and a great many things were accelerated uh, far faster than, than we could or we've, we've previously managed to uh, deploy to the track and, and in fact I'd say that you know we did a very good job of that and uh, we came out of four races with uh, some respectable finishes uh, culminating in a, a very genuine fourth place in Bahrain and that was a result of, of what I would describe as highly tactical um, innovation. With no testing, we were straight into using uh, the Friday P1 and P2 sessions as uh, the equivalent of track tests, which is not something we've, we've done before. We knew we would have to do it for this season. We didn't realise quite how quickly and aggressively we would have to adopt that. We, we'd always, always been conscious that, that our very uh, sort of tactical play into the first four races uh, would make us look better than we would have done for those races, but that uh, uh, didn't necessarily mean that our underlying development rate, that is in the wind tunnel, would be any better than anyone else's. Uh, it's just that we were bringing the stuff to the track quicker than they were. Uh, so we had a big concern over what performance we would have in Spain relative to the competitors uh, and that they would come to Spain with, with some bigger steps uh, developed over a longer period. Um, and uh, in fact that, that proved to be the case. Conscious of that we had been trying to run in parallel a, a more strategic campa campaign in terms of uh, big pieces to fit on the car. I have to say we were very pleasantly surprised at how well it worked for us. We'd uh, obviously been uh, holding out great hopes uh, that this would be the, the package that took us from uh, uh, a position that had been uh, languishing uh, back into the realms of, of, of Q1 to lower Q2 level. Uh, this was the package we all hoped would, would bring us back up into the, the top 10. Well, we're still working uh, very hard on uh, new updates. Um, the difference between this year and last is that the, the aerodynamic regulations carry over to uh, next year. Uh, therefore, uh, a good, a good uh, amount of what we work on uh, on the MP424 will still be relevant and apply to the 25. Um, at the same time we have to develop next year's car, develop the, the, the base package. Uh, the chassis in particular is just being finalised at the moment. Uh, so we're, we're putting uh, uh, a, a good amount of effort, probably about 50-50 at this stage, spread between uh, the, base, the base performance of the 25 and the uh, developments for the 24.